Well. That's. That scientist is being a weenie. I'm doing. We. That was just the top of the nail. How much deeper does the foundation go? The funicular. <laughs> Oof. Damn, Zephy. Yeah, I better be getting paid. That's all I can say. The crystals are growing crazy here. It's almost like they're trying to stop me. I'm just gonna say it. I blame the board. This is all the board's fault. Yeah. The HRA was damaged. The board said it. When Marshall blew up the nail, the board attacked her. I don't fucking like it. Alright. Let's, let's, let's get on the. Let's answer the hotline bling from Marshall. Well, there's two of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lethal. I tried to get out after the detonation, but the astral spike came out of nowhere. I escaped, but my HRA was damaged. I'd bet a year's salary the board sent it. We never did see eye to eye. Yeah, the fingers in front or behind the back. That's the important. Trench, the bureau, the house. They make themselves part of every important process. Nothing a little C4 can't fix. Two birds, one bomb. Christ, what a mess. But I stopped there. And is. I did it. I if Faye you, did her part, then the bureau is safe. You didn't stop the hit. The next thing. Jesse has good reason to hate the bureau. But that could be what we need right now. She won't follow the same path. What is fall into the same traps. She'll lead her. Hold up. Now I gotta verify, because I think you might be right. Here's my last lesson. You can save everybody. The Deborah Wilson was seer. Oh, no, this is a uh, Brig Bennett. Let's see if I can get this article to load and see what else she's done. Come on. 
Well, apparently, this was her uh, her first uh, big role. She only started uh, acting professionally in 2014. Hmm. Also, uh, did, uh, did Dr. Darling sound familiar at all? Unmapped area. Because I sure didn't place his voice at first. Uh, the, the guy who played Dr. Darling is the voice actor for Alan Wake. Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> he was not Steve Bloom. And uh, for that, I believe we were all thankful. Nobody else hears the house. Their ears are too full of lies. We were shown the way inside so we could help. But all we've done is fall victim to the same parasite. I should have seen the web earlier. The strands between Northmore, the pillar, the gun, the id. What hope did we have? Thrown into this conflict. It does a little bit. I decided it's a little to weird. join the bureau in the upper levels to end my long absence spent in the foundation. Northmore will be angry at me for disobeying him. That's just his way. But I don't care. I need to remain in the oldest house to help however I can. I doubt I can steer the Bureau back on the right course, but I have to try. And then I he died. So without, without devotion, I can hardly remember how it felt. I realize how grateful I am to Father for setting me on this path. I wish I could tell him that. This is Director Faden. Send a ranger to my position. All right, cool. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> hey, ranger, you want to see some shit? Oh, hi, Marshall. Marshall? You're alive. I'm going to guess no. Soon you will no longer recognize us or yourself or him, or her, or them. Family is dead. The walls are broken, but... Yellow and red and yellow. God damn it. Invoid is made right. Please. Take everything. I am not letting you take this. You've always been the new you. You want this to be true. these goodies. I'll have those. Sorry, Ranger. was trying to possess him. There we go. Ow! Bitch!
Ah, fucker. Avoid fatal injury. Oh, the red is doing the shit to my eyes again. Also, oh, apparently the former about, was about to send help. Uh, so, interesting. I need to switch grip out. I do like how if you die in a boss fight, it doesn't it doesn't go through the fucking cutscenes again. Oh, fruit basket. <laughs> Turn to sender. coming from that way. Yeah, right? It was right fucking there. I just couldn't get to it. Sniper. Mm. Yeah. I'm gonna need to. Uh, I'm gonna switch off a of Pierce. Switch that to spin. See if I've got any mods for that. They're gonna add some damage. Yeah, the red is really fucking with my eyes, too. That's not helping. I 
ammo recovery. Grouping efficiency. We'll try this. Down the hole you go. Dropping her down a fucking pit does some decent damage. We're going to exploit the shit out of that when we can. Oh, hi. Down you go, ho! You fight for me now. Fucking snipers. All right, Axeman's over there fighting another one. Wrong weapon. It do be looking like a virtual boy game right now. Bitch, where you go? Sniper, help me out. Ooh, look at you throwing grenade spreads.
Bitch teleported in front of me. That was rude. Get spiked on. Ow. Your life force is running out. Yep, so is hers. Get spiked. The nail is corrupted. That explains why the board wasn't answering what's causing the quakes. Marshall came down here to stop this. I should have been with her. I could have saved her. Well, but I can still save everyone else. You know, Jesse, let's take into account the fact that <coughs> her death is her own goddamn fault because if she'd have told you she was going down here, you'd have known, then you could have helped her. No. Fuck that. She brought it on herself. <laughs> Improve my attitude? Go fuck yourself. There you go. <laughs> oh, I'll be sure to. Let's play it smart. They don't even know I'm onto them. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> you had the exact same thought I did. No, uh, improve your attitude. Listen here, cunts. can't touch it i can't undo the astral bleeding in the foundation but at least it stopped along with the seismic activity you did it jesse did you ever find marshall i did she's gone she died thinking she'd save the bureau not a bad way to go i mean she almost fucked the I bureau thinking she saved it but I didn't even see it coming. But I promise I'll be ready for the next one. I mean, what good is a director who can't hold her bureau together? It's a fair question. It's a fair question. <laughs> That's the end of expansion one. They are, in fact, in order. Now, she most definitely was not ready for it. I thought I know how to handle things now that I'm the director. Turns out shit's still Clearly, weird. It's not that simple. I need to choose a direction for the Bureau. It should be one that serves our goals, not the board's. Whatever those are, I need to lead my way. Mm hmm.
Okay, it's finally decided to snap out of that. Got some ability points. We're gonna max out the ground slam damage first. Can I upgrade Shatter yet? No. Oh, that's under assets. I want to see how many tokens I have now. I have like fucking 30. Close. The board <laughs> does not like Pope. I... Hmm. The board is referring to both of us. Director? Now that this nail business is handled, I should probably be getting back to executive. Yeah, the board wants that too. But maybe I'll keep poking around. Just for a little bit. Has the nail been doing anything since we restored it? Probably not. Define anything. Anything unusual? Define unusual. Define unusual. Emily. Sorry, but the answer is a whopping yes. Now that it's whole, the nail is emitting a constant field of, well, think of it like low-level radiation. Oh, that's good. It seems to suppress any biological matter it encounters. This explains why nothing grows here and why the Bureau had to abandon the area. Prolonged exposure would certainly begin affecting neural processes. You should leave then. Wait. Was the field created when I cleansed the nail? I considered that, but the nail's readings are quite different from the ones I recorded at the cleanse control points. I think the nails field is purely of its own making. In fact, I think it would passively prevent any his corruption, like the HRAs do. Which makes me wonder what actually occurred when you cleansed the nail. I've been wondering about that myself. Did the board let the his corrupt the nail? Did they want me to cleanse it? If so, why? What do you know about Director Northmore? Don't trust the board. Well, uh, he was Director Trench's predecessor, and Northmore is famous for being the first board-appointed director. See, before he found the oldest house, directors were picked by committees of old men in suits, drinking cognac and smoking cigars or whatever. You know, standard, uninteresting methods. I think the word you're looking for is bureaucratic. Mm -hmm. Or antiquated. Regardless, Northmore was eventually forced to... Well, <laughs> we don't need to go into that. No, I think we Especially do. Usually, the only two board appointed directors left the position under uh, unusual circumstances. If the board appoints a director, then how do they retire them? <laughs> Bang, that's how. Watch. Sorry, Jesse, I, I didn't mean to imply that. Don't worry. If anyone's getting shown the door, it's them. What do you know about an entity named Former? I can't say I've heard of it. You got any details for me? Well, imagine a one-eyed bug thing. I think it was a part of the board, but then something happened and now it's... separate? Interesting. See, I always wondered if the board was some sort of entity or group or conglomerate of linked consciousnesses, but this supports the group theory. Although I could have undergone some sort of corporeal exile. Too many unknowns to form a working hypothesis yet, but I can prioritize this matter in future astral dives if you think it's important. Fortune favors the prepared. Do it. I'm gonna keep looking around. I wish I could go with you, but I still need 30 hours of training before I can do field work. We'll work on that. All right. Don't be a stranger. Well, I think we're done down here. Which means...
We're going to the sector elevator. And I believe the best place to start that will be in Central Executive. I could also check the janitor's office. I probably should check the janitor's office. Yeah, I'm going to check the janitor's office. Oh, I know it fine. It okay, I fix. I the protagonist. I do everything. I am Ramirez. Yeah, I found a file on the old director, Northmore. Didn't list any date of death. You, uh, you know anything about that? Could be an error. The record staff process a lot of data. Maybe it just slipped through. Yeah, maybe. Got anything Man, new to say? I never thought I'd be working in the executive sector. Look at me now, Ma. <laughs> nope. I'll see you later. You know where I'll be. Doesn't look like you have anything new. There's no way this happened by accident. Also, we should probably check in. Sounds like she can really handle things. <clears throat> Check in on Dylan. I'll be here waiting for you when you wake up, brother. He's been out a while because that's yes. a hell of a beard he's got going on. Right, uh, the only way to get to the closest one is through the sector elevator, so I guess we'll do that first. Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there, reaching for her, trying to make her act. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man, a hunger in the dark. Investigation sector. Investigation sector, huh? We should check this out. You know, I knew it was all connected and everything. I did not expect it to be that connected. <laughs> Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there. A presence. Jesse Faden could hear it. A call. It was faint. Reaching for her from a dark place. Faden was sensitive to visitations. She had them all the time. From her guiding star. And the previous director. She was the perfect receiver. As if she'd been made for this. Faden paused to feel it. The force at play here. It was changing things around her, subtle, trying to make her act. Faden didn't like that. Her guide felt it too. Polaris didn't flare up in defense as with the hiss. So it wasn't all bad, not a hostile transmission. It was powerful, but it was coming from far away and made weak because of the distance. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man, a man desperate to escape. She sensed something else, too. A hunger in the dark. Not unlike the hostile resonance. Waiting. She knew that desperate acts can have grim consequences. It was this, more than the man's despair, that made her follow the call. The elevator lights winked back on. The darkness receded like a memory. There was a new button on the elevator control panel. 
Investigation sector. No, he's not. <laughs> the elevator door slid shut with practice bravado. However, you had my interest, but now you have my attention. But first, was it maintenance sector or access corridor? I can never remember. Yeah, right. <laughs> what do you know about this, Pope? Yeah, yeah, I probably am. I think it was access corridor I wanted. It was. I can never remember it and I always get it wrong. Like, I doubt there's going to be anything new there because Ati has checked the fuck out. But I guess it's worth a look. grenade hadn't gone off yet. Like I fired that first charge round and I sat there for like five seconds. He's still gone. I get the feeling he had more of an agenda than he let on. Mm -hmm. Did he already get what he was here for? Probably. All right, we're off to investigations then. There we go. Mm -hmm. 
well. Hello? Anyone here? Guess not. I mean, did you think there would be? <clears throat> Bractor supplement. Resignation letter. Hmm. It's not working. We'll read all these once I somewhere. collect all the ones in here, because it looks like there's quite a few. I saw a Seems bunch of circles. A lot more crowded than the rest of the bureau. Jesus, there's so many files. Branch official warning? Hmm. Weapon mods are full again. Do I even honestly really care? I mean, I guess I might as well break down. No, I'm just breaking down anything below five now. Anything four or low, lower just gets yeeted straight into the trash. Investigation. God, I'm going to have so much reading to do in about 10 seconds. Here we go. JC Inquiry. Mr. Dennis, a request came through recently from an FBI agent asking for all our files on Bright Falls, specifically on the disappearance of the author Alan Wake. Per the interagency information exchange agreement, I had some paper pushers gather up a folder of all the pre-approved files. Don't worry, all the inappropriate material is either missing or redacted. But I'm writing to let you know that we received this request from a special agent named Alex Casey. Sounds familiar, right? That's because Alex Casey is the name of the fictional detective in those hard-boiled crime books Alan Wake wrote. Pretty interesting that an FBI agent sharing a name with the most famous character Wake wrote is looking into a case dealing with a writer's fiction coming true. I think this is worth looking into, but what's your opinion? Just give the word and I'll start surveillance on the guy. Special Investigator Gleason. Mr. Kirkland, here are the latest, latest agents confirmed missing, presumed dead from the containment breach yesterday. Agent Jonathan Connor. <laughs> Agent Researcher Ezra Cruz, Agent Carolyn Dempsey, Agent Lindsay Malcolm, Agent Charles Murray, Agent Derek Shaw. Letters of condolence will be delivered to you to sign prior to sending them to their families. You'll be updated as soon as additional confirmations are made. Also, per your request, a network engineer checked how many cases were back up digitally. Unfortunately, a large number of active investigations were not archived yet, and the only hard copies of reports exist behind the firebreak. They're lost, I'm afraid. So that's probably the um, the records department that I found down in the foundation. Whom it may concern is with great anger and regret that I tender my resignation as head of investigations for the FBC. I do this in protest of the rampant disregard for my department's redacted. My staff cannot continue to work in these conditions. Previous requests and warnings have fallen on deaf ears, so I must now rely on my actions to speak louder than my words ever could. I blame this situation on our redacted, who has routinely ignored my request for assistance in reclaiming the parts of the investigation sector lost to the redacted loose inside. I will never forget the screams of brave agents begging for us to open that firebreak. 
will carry that shame for the rest of my days. The redacted had fa has failed his agents. I will never forgive him for that. Sincerely, William Kirkland. Kirkland, I'm growing tired of your blatant attempts to lay your incompetence at my doorstep. I know you want this to be true, but you are head of investigations. This failure is your responsibility. What did you think would happen, holding a dangerous specimen in investigations? The containment sector exists for a reason. They're better trained and better equipped for this type of work. In fact, they have admirably taken on certain AWE monitoring responsibilities that your staff are no longer capable of. This happens more and more now. And don't think your petty investigation, internal investigations have gone past my notice. You are a worm. Everything I've done has been for the benefit of the Bureau. The Prime Candidate program only failed because of Darling. You're both failures plotting against me. You are tra traitors, but the truth will emerge out of you. You are choosing to become my enemy, Kirkland. You don't want to be. Zechariah Trench, Director. <clears throat> Mr. Kirkland, we stopped at Keystone on our way to the target AWE like you asked. I'm sending my report directly to you to try and keep a lid on this Groom and Morales desertion issue. We didn't find any sign of them here. Given their records, it's possible they switched teams like you suspected, but I don't think that's the case. An event definitely occurred here in Keystone, and I think Grooman and Morales got caught up in it. The entire population has vanished into thin air. Reminds me of the ordinary case, but that was just the adults if I'm remembering the file correctly. This is different. I think our guys are casualties, not traitors. It was an AWE, it seems to be over. We walked through the whole town, and the only strange thing we noticed were markings on various buildings. Two overlapping circles with a dot in the shared space. Could be unrelated. I'll show you the pictures when I get back. In the meantime, you should send a team out here to cordon this place off and maybe get the comms guy working on a cover story. Agent Keenum. Mr. Dennis, so yes, there's an increase in AWE cases, and yes, it would be a good idea to put together a special task force to examine exactly why that is. However, it seems that a tiny little detail has slipped through the cracks. We don't have the damn staff. If you expect us to detect, investigate, and process more AWE cases, you need to give us more people. It's simple math. Between the staff we lost in the Hartman thing and the ones who left for other departments after Kirkland quit, we're barely managing to keep up with the workload. Hell, just filing the paperwork for all the altered items we left behind in the sector has been an ordeal. Another thing, and this is going to sound paradoxical, we have an overcrowding situation. This lobby isn't meant to accommodate a whole sector's worth of staff. We put forward a motion to move investigations to a more suitable location months ago. It better not still be sitting on your desk. People are getting restless, and as Kirkland's interim repli replacement, it's your job to handle it. Best regards, Agent Grayson. Tractor procedures. Frank Elk Tractor. Olive Green. Frank Elk. <laughs> nice. Dried blood on the grill when last seen. Item is capable of vocalized responses or growls in unmanned locomotion. Considered highly aggressive and dangerous. The item first came to the Bureau's attention after the death of William Burrow, owner of Burrow Farm outside Trenton, Texas. Local authorities arrived on scene after an employee found the mutilated body of Mr. Burrow beneath his tractor. <clears throat> Police arrived, but were immediately driven away by the tractor. Panic calls to federal authorities were intercepted by Bureau of Communications staff, and a team was dispatched. Upon arrival, the agents approached the item. It responded by growling like a bear. Three agents were injured when they tried to detain the item, which escaped. Aerial searches for the item are ongoing. Speaking to Mrs. Burrow only revealed that she had a domestic altercation with Mr. Burrow the night of the in incident. Whether these events are connected is currently unknown. This communication led to a local coroner examining the body of William Burrow. Burrow William, male Caucasian, 33-year-old man found dead on his property per police report. Remains obtained <clears throat> for coroner's office also include blood, urine, bile, stomach contents, and bone fragments. Uh, blunt force injuries to the head, lacerations of the left ear and cheek, blood force injuries to extremities, dislocation of the right knee, Complete avulsion of the right upper extremity with associated fracture of the proximal right humerus. Extensive trauma to the abdominal region. Complete avulsion of multiple organs, including stomach, heart, liver, pancreas, kidneys, and portions of the large and small intestine, all missing from scene. It is my opinion that Mr. Burrow's death is not the result of a mechanical accident as claimed by authorities. 
The removal of organs is consistent with an animal attack. Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, Internal Investigation D0845 was launched into the ethical practices of Dr. Casper Darling, Head of Research. Despite the accounts of anonymous redacted regarding inhumane treatment of a redacted currently housed in the Bureau, <clears throat> our official findings regarding this were inconclusive. Numerous obstacles arose during this investigation. The majority of redacted sector personnel seemed to be wholly unaware of any such redacted contained there. One redacted confirmed the redacted's code name to be redacted, but all files pertaining to that name were inaccessible, being classified under the highest clearance level. Investigators were similarly blocked from entering the redacted research wing to interview its staff. The matter, matter was further complicated by the lack of clarity on whether non-human paranatural entities warrant humane treatment. While this investigation cannot address any charges against Dr. Darling, we do recommend an investigation into redacted research. <clears throat> I'm... I mean, <laughs> Griff, <laughs> there's the Twitch notifications, uh... There's Twitter, you can enable the notifications there. I actually posted that I was going live in two Discord servers. <laughs> For once, I have done everything in my power. <laughs> but how are you doing, my dude? And <laughs> don't doubt you have you just not tuned into the right reality. That's that's that is yeah, that's a common problem. Well, we have not done enough. Fuck. <laughs> Someday I'll be good enough. <laughs> <coughs> per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, Redacted was launched in the Redacted of Director Zachariah Trench. Recent change in Redacted witnessed in Dr. Trench, including aggressive Redacted when Redacted with other staff has been observed. However, this investigation is aimed at interpreting this issue rather than proving it. Notable Redacted between Director Trench and Dr. Darling has been witnessed by numerous Bureau staff. Although both declined to meet for an interview on the matter, witness accounts suggest their arguments center around the dimensional research wing and the redacted kept inside. However, no evidence exists to confirm Director Trench's redacted as anything more than interpersonal disagreements. The investigation has concluded that Director Trench's behavior is not indicative, and, uh, indicative of any redacted and that his fitness to lead is not in question. Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, Internal Investigation P-1429 was launched into the legality of the prime candidate program redacted by the Federal Bureau of Control. Since all known subjects relevant to the investigation use executive privilege to decline interviews, very little first-hand information was gathered. However, anonymous sources and documentation declassified by Mr. Kirkland both paint an alarmingly clear picture of systematic redacted and redacted redacted were brought into the oldest house and placed under redacted examination and testing with the aim of appointing one as director upon maturity. <coughs> this program has produced no successful cases and only resulted in the traumatic redacted of paranaturally inclined redacted. Not only is this in breach of the ASH Act, but it flies in the face of basic human redacted. The investigation team unequivocally redacted the prime candidate program and recommends that it be redacted immediately. <sighs> Dr. Rhea Underhill is a professor at the University of Woodrow in the United Kingdom where she teaches biology with a focus on botany. Dr. Underhill once worked with the Bureau as a parabotanist stationed in the research sector of the oldest house. She served with no incidents or demerits, demerits and is praised by those who formerly worked with her, including Dr. Darling. Dr. Underhill has no known connections to paracriminal organizations or any record of breaching her NDA since leaving the Bureau. Her civilian behavior has been ideal, with the exception of an ongoing personal relationship with Dr. Darling that appears to have begun during their time as co-workers in the research sector and revisited intermittently ever since. Depending on the duration of her work in the oldest house, it may be required to have both parties sign a relationship clearance form. This investigation has found no compelling reason to deny Dr. Darling's request to offer Dr. Underhill an interim position with the aim of finding a solution to the mold threshold issue. <coughs> <coughs> oh. 
Those are all the files that we have found so far in this room of the investigation sector. Open this window. So can I... I can yoink us. Nothing else in here, it looks like. Beep. Specimen escape assessment. Purpose of internal investigation X0397 is to examine the containment failure of specimen SI1 that resulted in the deaths of redacted agents. An inspection report of the containment equipment three days earlier showed no faults. Investigators suspect human error to be the cause, yet no department has provided any evidence to support this. Technicians were able to recover the researchers' notes on the specimen from the internal network. On the redacted of redacted, the specimen, specimen began to play, displaying a sharp increase in aggressive redacted. Cross-referencing that date with various logs found only two events inconsistent with the sector's daily routine. One, the air filters were changed, and two, an hour prior to the incident, a civilian named Alice Redacted entered the sector regarding an unrelated investigation. Given their connection to the same other AWE case, it is likely that Mrs. Redacted's presence is relevant to the specimen's escape and to the Redacted. Investigation is ongoing. Control point! Womp. No detective, but something definitely happened here. You just, you know, you know, Jesse, that's fair. That's fair. Blessed organization. This group slash individual has operated outside of the Bureau's notice for decades, perhaps longer, displaying a level of skill and caution rarely seen in paracriminal groups. A review of past cases has found various mentions of their activity over the years. In 2016, a production company called Blessed Pictures was connected to an altered item case as well as the death of an agent from exposure to illicit paranatural materials. In 1994, a Los Angeles-based public speaker named Chester Bless was involved in the illegal use of an altered item. In 1988, a business called Blessed Repair and Service was suspected of involvement with an object of power case, perhaps even creating it. None of these businesses or individuals has ever been located, however, their connection to appearances of altered items and objects of power is too direct to be considered circumstantial. <clears throat> An arrest order has been issued for any persons believed to be involved with the Blessed Organization. Okay, Blessed Pictures was the one with the movie camera. I don't think we've heard anything about the other ones. One. Two. A three. Do we know each other? I feel... This feels familiar. I can't seem to... I, I've forgotten it. I'm sorry. I'm... My name is Alan Wake. Yes. Zane. There's nothing to worry about. Tom, the poet, the diver, you, you look different. That was just a, a role, a character, the protagonist I played in my, my old film. I'm a filmmaker, an old terror like yourself. We're working on this together, remember? An artistic collaboration. You need a drink. 
Well, night springs. Oh, that's just disturbing. Hmm. I had a feeling it was. Which leads to RT questions. That was Alan Wake, the writer who went missing in that AWE case I read about. <coughs> yes. Um. And Thomas Zane was with him. The poet. No, wait. D -d -d he was a filmmaker. I, I always remember that one. My key, thank you. I think I'm gonna just go ahead and go. I'm gonna leave. Dr. Emil Hartman was devoured by hungry darkness. I came to think that had been Hartman. <coughs> The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. I bet I know what that change might have been. Mm -hmm. 